So, I've watched the presidential debates in the United States. I can only classify it as what appears to be elderly abuse. Honestly, how many people does America have? Like, over 350 billion, right? And you can't find two people to represent that country, which would be around the age of 40, I suppose. No? Well, I, I guess, like, with uh, age comes wisdom. Now, here's the interesting part. Uh, what I first saw the debate, I noticed that CNN is trying to pull all the strings. Uh, so, first off, they wouldn't allow more than one representative from each candidate to be in the audience. Well, actually, there was no audience. It was a completely empty room. Probably they set up a trap for Biden so that he waves at the empty room and then looks bad on camera. I don't know what they were thinking, but probably they went with that. Now, normally, live streams have a seven-second delay, but CNN increased that all the way to around one minute. I mean, if they wanted to edit something out, I'm not saying they did, but like, if they had the desire to, if they had the inclination to edit something out, uh, they could have done so. I mean, one minute is ample opportunity for you to be able to do any of those things. And furthermore, they did something bizarre they said that free use just doesn't apply because they're CNN, right? So, like, if you're CNN, you can decide. You know what? Like, this part of legislation, we don't like it. So, no more fair use. Basically saying that anyone which uploads any audio or video from the debate is going to get a DMCA notice. Which is interesting because, first of all, they didn't follow that through. Like, a lot of commentators did actually comment because it is fair use. Like, you are allowed to host footage from an event, but I guess like the fear mongering was enough in order to try to dissuade people from commenting the event live, right? Because they wanted people to watch only the authoritative sources and they didn't want to watch someone like Tim Pool, which may have had several takes during the event. So with all that, and, and I also assume more, like there's no way of knowing if Biden didn't get access to the questions beforehand. Like I would be surprised if they don't because, uh, you know, in the past it was revealed that the press actually works with the president in such a matter by, by giving him like access to the questions, like which reporters he gets to ask. Uh, I think like Hillary Clinton had uh, been caught doing the same, like it was a debate and she actually got the questions beforehand. So like you, you get all of these set up, right? You get all of these in place. So... With that out of the way, how did the debate go? Now, I, I am pretty subjective myself, you know, so I would like to allow you guys to listen to a far more objective person and hear how he thinks that the debate went. And the whole time the split screen is killing Biden yep. because he's got his mouth open, he looks confused, doesn't know where he is. He's lost his train of thought at least twice in like disastrous shape. Those are gonna be played a billion times in viral video after viral video. So this is an epic disaster. It like, I see uh, people online saying, well, okay, that answer wasn't so bad. No, it doesn't, any particular answer doesn't matter at all. This thing is over. He looks like he's barely surviving. I don't mean the debate, I mean life. And so, there's no person that has a single brain cell left in their head who thinks that Joe Biden is the best candidate to take on Donald Trump. You would have to be even crazier than Donald Trump to think that. This thing is over, over, it's, I'll guarantee you this. I, I would bet any, show me a Democratic politician and I will bet them any amount of money that Joe Biden's gonna lose this election if he's the candidate. It's a guaranteed loss. He's the candidate. It's a guaranteed loss. You're telling me this is the most important election of our lifetimes. You're telling me that democracy is on the line, and you're going to put on a guy who can't even talk, who can't even sit there and look normal. This thing's a bloodbath. Wow, 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 wow! Check, check. You can't say that word. I'm sorry. The word has been redacted by the press corps. It's danger. It's harmful. We can't use it anymore, okay? Like, the, the most intelligent people in the United States of America become members of the press, and they just don't understand metaphors. They're very serious, all right? So don't use metaphors, please. You spook them. They're easily spooked. Uh, what, what do I have to say about this? I did read some copium on the internet. Uh, my favorite one was, look, 
Biden's fine. Everyone that says that he is starting to suffer from a couple of cognitive issues, they're wrong. Biden is still extremely sharp. In fact, probably sharper than he has ever been. He's a patriot. He loves his country. It's just that he's old. And to which a lot of people were responding, uh, wow, I I'm glad that the bot is set so low. <laughs> it's like, okay. At least he can think, you know? So, not very good. That now, the question is, what's going to happen, right? Because everyone watching this debate has noticed that, um, yeah, if, if things remain the way they are, it, it's very unlikely that the Democrats will win. So, one of the questions is, will the Democrats choose someone else? Right? Will they choose someone like Newsom or will they choose someone like Michelle Obama? Uh, Michelle Obama said that she won't run. And Gavin Newsom isn't doing very well in the polls in California now. Like, like where there's like the most democratic state. <laughs> He's not doing well in the polls over there. Uh, now, you got to understand the establishment likes a person like Joe Biden. Like, imagine this, right? Imagine you're a high ranking general or you're some NGO activist, and you go to the president and you want to requ request something, how likely is it that the president will say no? I mean, you, you saw him at the debate stage, right? Like, how difficult is it in order to run circles around him? It's not very difficult, right? So, like, most people like this. I mean, he has been grandfathered in the presidency. It's unlikely that he would have the energy to argue with someone, right? Like, imagine having a conversation with Putin over the phone. Like, like if Putin starts arguing with him, do, do you think Biden is going to be able to have the energy to argue back, given what we saw on the debate stage? Probably not, right? So this is what makes him appealing for the managerial class. He's easy to manage. The managerial class likes managing, okay? It's, it's like two peas in a pod. Now, the other question is, let's assume... That even though they like him, they realize, okay, but like we can't win with him. Like, is there anything else we can do? The problem is that if you were to try to replace him now, like if, if you try to put someone else, that other person would have to catch up to Trump. So you'd ha need to, again, start investing money into the campaigning. And it would probably piss off the lobbyists a lot. A lot. I mean, think about it this way, right? There's a lot of companies... And foreign NGOs and activists that usually donate money to presidential campaigns. Now you have like the average person that donates a couple of dollars. You know, the small time donations. We're not talking about those. There are people that donate a lot of money. Like millions of dollars, right? Now those people expect something in return. They expect that once the person gets elected, they will start returning them favors. Like maybe some legislation passes. Maybe some legislation doesn't pass, right? This is how lobbying works. Now, imagine you have like all those people that paid money to Joe Biden. And all of a sudden, Joe Biden drops out of the race and a new guy comes in. Well, the new guy is not going to be beholden by the obligation. And he's going to say, well, you haven't paid me anything. So now you need all of these people that have paid money for Joe Biden to now start paying money for the other guy. They're going to be furious. They're going to be livid, right? Meanwhile, Trump doesn't have that issue. Like, he already uh, gathered a substantial amount of funding. So this is why it's incredibly unlikely that they will replace Joe Biden. Like, I, I think that if they did, they would have done it up until now. Of course, it's not completely off the table. Like, it's not in the realm of impossible, but it is very, very unlikely. You know, th this is the person that they have to go behind. But hey, you know, like maybe a miracle happens. Maybe a miracle from God. You know, a water pipe breaks somewhere. M maybe uh, some people that count the votes get very sleepy in the middle of the night. They get very tired, very sleepy. And all of a sudden they awake and it's like, okay, let's go back counting votes. And, and all of a sudden they find a lot of votes that they need. You know, it's like... Miracles do happen. I mean, America is the land of possibilities. So, you know, maybe they're banking on something like that. I personally don't know. Um, but uh, it's bad. It's bad for the Democrats. I mean, the, I, I don't even know why they went with the debate. Like, the funny part is, like, even, even CNN is seething. It's like, why did you go with this? And they're blaming Biden's team for insisting. I think what happened was that they were expecting Trump to not want a debate. I, I think that was the, the, the idea, it's like going in with the bluff. 
and hoping that Trump will back down when he sees all of the regulations that CNN is putting in place. It's like, okay, no one can live stream one minute. You, you're not allowed to have more than one person. Like, like all that thing would have probably gotten Trump to be like, you know what, we're backing down. As well as the drug test. Like, Biden refused to take a drug test, which was very interesting. So, you know, they, they probably expected Trump to be like, oh, well, you don't want to try to take the drug test? I'm not doing it. And then the Biden team would go, it's like, well, it was such a childish uh, request trying to humiliate the president. I didn't want to go with it, blah, 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 right? So I, I think, like, they expected that the debate wouldn't happen. And also they expected that all the prep time for the debate would be enough in order to get Biden to at least appear somewhat presentable. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. And, uh, I don't know, are there more debates coming? I haven't watched. But, uh, if there's more debates coming, I mean, uh, yeah, then we're going to have to use the word Cenk just did. Which I understand is problematic. Let me know what you think. If you want to support the channel, there's a pinned link into the comment section. If you click on it, it will take you over to my subscribe star, where you can donate. But it will also take you to my live stream. Yes, I do live stream, and we can talk about this more in depth. We can watch a couple of uh, key moments, and uh, we can analyze them further. So let me know, and I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.